This is a USSV Rhino, and it's the ultimate SUV. It's also insane. You already know that it's insane because you can see it and it looks insane, but trust me, it's far more insane than you can possibly imagine. This costs around $300,000. It's armored and it has gun ports and it is fully street legal. You can just cruise around in it. And today I'm going to review the ultimate SUV. SUV. Before I get started, be sure to check out Cars and Bids, which is my enthusiast car auction website for cool cars from the modern era, now with free listings. You can list your car for free and auction it on Cars and Bids. And we've had some great sales recently, including this Mercedes G-Wagon, which sold for almost $160,000, this fantastic Tesla Model S 90D, which brought $50,000, and this Porsche Panamera Sport Turismo Turbo SE Hybrid, which sold for almost $150,000. If you're looking to buy or sell a cool enthusiast car from the modern era, the 1980s and up, Cars and Bids is the place to do it with great daily auctions and amazing selection at carsandbids.com. I've borrowed this Rhino from iLusa, which is an exotic car dealership here in Orange County in Southern California. iLuso has an amazing inventory, primarily sports cars, supercars, and hypercars. It's really quite incredible, but they also have this. You can check out iLuso by clicking the link in the description below and follow along on iLuso's social media. But anyway, a little background here because I mean, <laughs> what the hell is this thing? Okay, first, USSV. That stands for US Specialty Vehicles, and they make this, the Rhino GX, and there's also a smaller model called the Rhino XT. Now, this is based on a Ford F450 Super Duty chassis, and then it's modified, clearly. <laughs> The goal is to create the ultimate SUV for someone who really needs security and protection, and this has protection. It's armored for one thing, and there's a lot of other features designed for use in an apocalyptic scenario. I mentioned the gun ports, but there's way more than just that, which I will show you. These are built here in Southern California, and like I said, $300,000 or so for the ultimate SUV. And now it's time to check it out. First, I'll take you on a thorough tour of this and show you all the quirks and features of the Rhino. Then I'll get it out on the road and see how it drives, and then I'll give it a Doug score. All right, I'm gonna start the quirks and features of the USSV Rhino GX by going over some of its more insane security measures designed to keep you safe in the event of an ambush by an attacker or the apocalypse. One crazy measure is on the outside. You can see right above the door, there's this little handhold, and then below the door, you have like a little indentation, and you have that in both front and rear doors. That's there so you're security team can hang off the side of the car. You're driving along being chauffeured, you can have security like hanging here with their guns drawn, kind of scanning around to make sure that nobody comes up and ambushes you. And so that's why this stuff is here. That's the level of insanity that we're talking about with the Rhino. But anyway, next up with the ridiculousness that is the USSV Rhino, I want to talk about the doors. Now they open obviously so you can get inside, but they are incredible incredibly heavy, just unbelievably heavy because they are armored. And in fact, if you parked on enough of an incline, I'm not entirely sure that one person alone could close the doors. They are absolutely crazy, but they have to be to fend off attacks from bullets and maybe missiles. Now, the doors have windows in them, like in a normal vehicle, and you can even see on the door panel on the front there are window switches, but you can't roll these windows down. That's because the windows are armored as well. They are bulletproof and incredibly thick. You can see the thickness right here in the front to help fend off attacks in case your armed security riding on the side didn't shoot the attacker before he started shooting at you. 
But even though the windows don't roll down, there is one way out on the doors, and that would be this. This is a gun port. On the outside, it looks just like a little black circle, but you can open it up and fire a gun from the inside if you're being ambushed. The way you do that is on the inside, you can see there's this little silver pin. You pull it out to release the lock, and then you slide this little handle, and that opens up the gun port. And then from there, you can kind of point the gun out and shoot. Now, you don't exactly have a lot of room to aim or to like swivel the gun because obviously you don't want your attacker to be able to shoot at you through this hole. So it's very small, but it's there and there is one on each rear door. So your security detail riding in the back can use this gun port if you're being attacked. Again, ridiculous. And actually, there's another way out from the inside, at least in back beyond the door, the little gun port, and that would be the escape hatch. It's on the roof, and you can see you twist this little lever, and then you can push open this escape hatch, and you can climb out that way if you absolutely had to. Or there's maybe a dual purpose for this escape hatch. You can pop out there and start shooting again at your attacker if you need. Obviously, that would give you better aim, although it does leave you a little bit more open to fire yourself. But there's an escape hatch in here <laughs> if that's important to you. And the craziness doesn't even come close to stopping there. You have door locks in the Rhino, the regular Ford door locks, of course, and that's fine for you or me, but it's not Rhino buyer fine. So there are auxiliary door locks, deadbolt locks with metal deadbolts that will lock the doors to an even greater level of security. You can see them here, and to activate them, you press this little switch to the left of the steering wheel, a little lock, and that will deadbolt the doors closed to make it even harder for an adversary to get inside your Rhino. That's crazy. And two other absolutely wild controls over here to the left of the steering wheel. One, you can see is labeled with a little fire. That would be your smoke screen. If you activate it, the car will drop little droplets of oil into the exhaust to shoot out smoke behind you and create a smoke screen, I guess, to help you lose your tail if someone is after you. That's like a James Bond movie thing, but this car actually has it, and it gets crazier. There's another switch there with like some nails on it, and yes, you guessed it, activate that, and it drops nails from the bottom of your Rhino, so you're driving along, someone's tailing you, you activate that, and then your assailant's tires are popped by the nails you have released from your car. Another ridiculous movie trick, but this has it. And we are nowhere near finished yet. Check this out. Right above the front seats, there is a screen mounted in the ceiling. Now, I was a little confused by what this did because the center screen takes care of most of your normal car functions. Well, this is a thermal imaging camera screen. It will show you like heat images from outside. And you can see it's showing like what's hot and what's cooler. And that's what you're seeing here. So if it's dark and someone is like running away from you or try to attack you and it's too dark to see them, you can see their body heat on your thermal imaging camera. And you can turn up the brightness, make it bright or dimmer if you need, and you can even switch it so that hot items are displayed in black if that's what you want to see, or switch it back so that hot items are displayed in white, all thanks to your crazy thermal imaging camera system that enhances your security even further. Now, that thermal imaging camera that is showing you this screen is mounted on the roof. You can see it here mounted right in the center and pointing forward. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like you can turn it around, which would be cool, so you're only seeing what's ahead of you with the thermal camera, but it's there, and no doubt it may makes you feel safer. Now you can also see near that thermal camera there is a giant LED light bar. In fact, there are a lot of giant LED light bars on the outside of the Rhino. You can see them on the sides, you can see them in the back. There are really bright LEDs pretty much everywhere you look here. I guess the theory here is if you get ambushed at night, you can make it look like day outside and maybe that'll scare away your attackers. Now, all of these LED lights are controlled in this center touchscreen here. This little menu controls them all, although it's a little bit confusing. It's not exactly very well done because when you tap the lights, you don't really know which ones you're turning on, and it doesn't tell you whether they're on or off. And when I was turning them off earlier, I had to have someone stand outside the car and say, okay, yep, no, you, not that one. Oh, yeah, that one. Okay, good. 
It was kind of annoying. It would be a lot better if they had a better system to tell you which ones are on or off, but if it's at night and you're using them, obviously that'll be pretty self-evident since they'll be lighting up the dark. But anyway, next up, speaking of screens in this car, right above this center screen, you have the mirror, which you can see is also a screen. And strangely enough, it's a touch screen. So when you tap it to select something, you leave a fingerprint on your mirror. And then if you want to put the menu away and just use it as a mirror, you have fingerprints all over your mirror. Not really an ideal situation. Also kind of weird, this mirror screen really just duplicates the functions of the center screen. It has navigation, it has like Bluetooth and claims to have radio, but the center screen has all that stuff too. So for me, I would just use this as a mirror, although it's not a particularly good one because you can see behind you, your visibility is not great thanks to all of this armoring on the body of the car. It really kind of constricts how well you can see out, which could be a problem, except that everyone will see you when you're driving this and get out of your way. Now, other interesting controls up here. One, right above the mirror, you have this little control panel. That's for your suspension, and you can adjust the height. Obviously, air suspension this, you can go to a very high height if you're going off-road. You can go low, maybe if you're trying to get in and out. There's also a sport mode. <laughs> which I find to be absolutely ridiculous that this crazy vehicle has a sport mode, but it does, and you can dial that using the little suspension control. Also, another interesting control up here at the base of all the center control stack, you have this little box that is a CB radio and a CB radio controller. And I guess the theory there is you can use it to talk to other members of your entourage. So you're driving along in this and you wanna communicate with the other cars in your security team. That's how you do it, built-in CB radio. Another feature you don't have in your car, but you would if you had one of these. Now, as far as the rest of the interior, beyond all the cool security countermeasures, it's kind of interesting in here. To create these trucks, USSV buys the very most base model Ford F450, since they're going to be heavily modifying it anyway. They don't want to pay for stuff they don't need. But the result of that is the front, the interior up here, is kind of a mishmash of really nice USSV stuff and really cheap basic Ford stuff. For example, the nice stuff, the seats, have this beautiful look, two-tone, with nice quilted leather in the center, which looks good. You have a lot of USSV logos everywhere. It's embroidered into the center console, also in leather, and it's embroidered into the door panel, which is nice. And you can see the door panel itself has a very nice look, leather stitching. It all looks very luxurious. You have another USSV logo in the seat, this gold logo with the Rhino, which also looks pretty nice. And you have a suede headliner here, suede on your sun visors, which all looks great. It's a very luxurious experience except because this is the very base model F-Series, you have no gauge cluster screen. Instead, you just have this sort of green dot pixelated display, which just looks cheap and doesn't really match the character of this car. Although personally, my favorite cheap Ford detail in here is the climate controls. Absolutely no frills. You can see blank switches and just simple little dials to adjust the climate control since this started life as a base model Super Duty with no like niceties or luxuries added. And it's just kind of funny to see that in such an expensive truck. Another interesting one is over on the dashboard. You can see this cheap bargain level plastic that Ford uses on their most base model cars right next to this nice leather on the dashboard added by USSV with nice stitching. The reason they didn't change the plastic is because that's where the airbag comes out. And if you put leather over that, it could make the airbag not pop out or not pop out properly if you're in an accident. So they didn't mess with that. And so you have this cheap plastic next to other nice stuff, again, kind of looks funny. Also looking funny is the steering wheel borrowed from the Ford pickups, like a lot of other stuff in here, but you have the USSV logo in an oval shape in the center where the Ford oval logo would be. They just pop that off and put their own logo on instead. Now, in addition to the funny mashup of cheap Ford and nice luxury stuff, there's also another funny item in here, and that would be the radar detector, which is built in next to the steering wheel to the right. It's ridiculous. This weighs 9,600 pounds. You are never going to be speeding. You do not need a radar detector in this vehicle, but it is there. We'll see if I can actually get it speeding when I drive it a little bit later. And next up, we move on to the back seats for more quirks and features. And it's pretty interesting back here. When this comes from Ford to USSV, it's obviously a pickup, a Ford F450 Super Duty truck. And so pretty much everything from the back of the front seats back is custom made to create an SUV out of this truck. And that includes the back seats 
seats and also a third row of seats back there, so you have good passenger room in the back of the Rhino. Now, for the second row passengers, you have some nice amenities back here. You have this fixed, like, tray coming off from the front center console, and it has cup holders on it, which is, of course, nice. And there's also climate controls back here, which controls a completely different climate zone and climate system from what you have up front. The climate vents are behind you. You can see they're fitted above the third row of seats back there, and then there are also a few more vents sort of on the sides of the ceiling going around the back, and you can control it all using this little climate control panel here in the second row, a completely different climate control system for the rear passengers. Now also under here you have a couple of charge ports for USB, and you can see there's a little voltage meter letting you know how much volts you have so you can charge your devices. Now also back here this was a massive pickup truck that became an SUV, so there is a lot of passenger space, and really you can sit back here and kind of lie down and really enjoy your experience as you're being chauffeured around. There's even an entertainment system screen that drops from the ceiling so you can watch movies while you're being chauffeured around in perfect, secure comfort, which is pretty nice. And if you want even more comfort, USSV offers an executive package with the Rhino where you can have a big screen TV. I think there's a partition and the big screen TV is mounted back here so you can really kind of lie back, relax, and let your driver and your security team do all the work. But anyway, next up we climb into the third row. Now getting into the third row would be kind of a challenge because these second row seats do not fold down to allow easy access, but they're bucket seats and there's enough space between them that you can just kind of climb through the second row seats and then place yourself in the third row, which is a pretty good situation. Now, being in the third row, it's a little tighter than in the second row. Well, a lot tighter, but there's still enough room for me, an adult, to comfortably sit back here. Although it's worth noting, there are three seats in the third row, three across, and the middle seat would be incredibly tight if you actually had three people in back from a width perspective. In terms of length and legroom and headroom, that's all good, but I wouldn't really want to put three in back, although it is technically possible. Now, as for the third row itself, frankly, it's pretty nice back here. Once again, you have a nice leg Leather, which looks good and on the sides of the seats you have nice leather trimming and a few cup holders and some storage areas and it all looks relatively nice some good attention to detail paid to even the third row which probably won't get used except for extra members of your security detail and next up we move on to the rear of the Rhino and to get into the cargo area you have to swing open the spare tire but before I do that I want to talk about the wheels in this car because they are crazy maybe the craziest thing about the entire car and I say that because the wheels are reversible. The front wheels are just the rear wheels flipped around and vice versa. They paint both sides and a front wheel is completely interchangeable with a rear wheel. You just flip it around, flip around the center cap and you can stick the front on the back and vice versa, which is truly crazy. Never heard of that before in any other car. And you may be wondering, why? Why did they do that? Well, there is a reason. When they buy these from Ford, they come as dualies, meaning they have two rear wheels on each side for four total wheels in back. USSV didn't want these to have a six wheel setup with four in the back and two up front for a few reasons. Number one, if you get a flat tire in the back with a dually setup, it makes it more difficult to change the tire. And also, it means that you have different tire sizes front and rear, meaning that a spare tire wouldn't match up with all of the tires on the truck. So they created this wheel setup so that the front wheel and the back wheel both worked even though the rear axle is configured for a dually. And that means that this spare tire can fit on front or rear wheels. You just flip it around depending on which one you're putting it on. Absolutely crazy. Never heard of anything else like this, but it's a neat feat of engineering for this truck. By the way, also worth noting, these tires are of course run flats, meaning that if they're popped or punctured, you can still drive on them up to certain speeds in order to get away from danger. But anyway, back to the rear cargo area situation. Like I said, to get back here, you gotta fold out the spare tire, which is pretty standard in vehicles with a spare tire. And then you open up this rear cargo door and that gives you access to the cargo area in back. And you can see it's not really all that big back here on account of the fact that there are two large rows of seats in there taking up most of the space. But if you do want more space, you can fold down this third row and it looks like you can completely remove it if you want as well. So you can just pull it out if you want it to be a two row vehicle and maximize your cargo space in back. But anyway, to me, probably the craziest thing back here is the way it looks with the door closed. It kind of looks 
like a house, frankly. <laughs> has sort of that overall shape, and it's absolutely massive, which kind of contributes to that feeling. In fact, this vehicle is almost 90 inches tall. It's 96 inches wide, which is unbelievably wide, but the height is really the wild part. You're never gonna get this into a garage. And for some perspective on the height, a Honda CRV is closer in height to a Ford GT than it is to this thing. This is that tall. It is absolutely a massive vehicle with huge presence. And in back, it really does kind of look like a house driving down the road. And it's not just the height and width where this is massive, it's also the weight. This weighs in at around 9,600 pounds, just short of five tons of vehicle. And that's not because of the Ford Super Duty that's underneath, it's because of the massive custom armored SUV that sits on this platform. Armoring is incredibly heavy, and that tells you just how heavy, almost 10 thousand pounds, an immense thing to move around. And the size is incredibly obvious when you look at it on the outside. It was designed to almost maximize its muscular, brawny look and make it seem even bigger than it is, which is actually kind of hard. You can see all the angles and the added muscle on the outside. It just looks pretty ridiculous, but it's also incredibly head-turning. It will make sure everybody gets out of your way, and it's intimidating, which is part of the point of a personal security vehicle like this. You don't want to mess with the person driving one of these. But anyway, since I'm on the outside, I want to talk naming. Now, like I said, USSV, that's the brand name that makes this, and it stands for US Specialty Vehicles. And the model is the Rhino GX. That's this car. And like I said, there's also a smaller USSV model called the Rhino XT, which is a completely different vehicle based on the Jeep Wrangler. Now, I have no idea why these two models are both called the Rhino, even though they're completely different, and they're only distinguished by the two letters at the end of the word, one of which is the same in both models, an X. It seems like very bizarre marketing to me, but this isn't just the USSV Rhino, it's technically the Rhino GX to distinguish it from the smaller Rhino XT. Now, USSV is based here in Southern California and they convert these Ford F450s into Rhino GXs here, but their main market for these is not the United States. In fact, they sell a majority of these into Asia and specifically into China, where amazingly it is not called the Rhino, it's called the G. Patton, as in George Patton, the famous American military general. They named this crazy brutish vehicle after him, and in China, that's the name they sell it under, the USSV G. Patton, instead of Rhino GX, which is kind of hilarious. And by the way, speaking of like badging on the outside, I love the USSV logo in the front, in the front grille, USSV with this Rhino on it. No other brand has a logo quite like that, very distinctive to USSV and to the Rhino. And finally, we move under the hood in the Rhino, and it's worth noting the hood doesn't appear to be armored. It looks sort of more brutish than the one in the regular Ford F450, but when you actually open it up, it's just not all that heavy. It's not heavy enough to really be armored, and so I suspect it isn't. Now, underneath the hood, you have the engine, which is a 6.7 liter Ford turbo diesel V8, and I don't think it's modified for this vehicle, which is interesting. This engine is known for being able to pull, haul, tow a lot of weight, but this is a very, very heavy vehicle. So I'm curious if this engine has met its match with all of the armoring and the heavy weight of the Rhino GX. I guess we'll go find out. All right, driving the Rhino, this vehicle is is catastrophically insane. <laughs> First off, you're sitting up incredibly high. I guess that's probably true of the Ford truck as well that it's based on. Um, but you're looking out over, you know, this matte black hood that looks like beefy and muscular. You look in the mirror and you see this like angry looking, you know, fender flares. <laughs> you're like, okay, well this is insane. I can't imagine encountering this vehicle on the road you'd probably be absolutely mortified. Now, accelerating is, <laughs> it's a bit of an exercise in patience because this is so heavy. I mean, I'm flooring it in a school zone right now and in no danger of violating the law before I get to the next stop sign because it just isn't fast. I mean, at the end of the day, they might add more power to this engine, I'm not really sure, but it's still a 9,000 pound vehicle. I mean, you could add all the power in the world 
and it wouldn't help you that dramatically make this thing fast. Indeed, this is really not about performance in any capacity. Even though it's so expensive, so many vehicles that are this price point deliver both luxury and performance. This is more about luxury and you know safety and security. That's their whole thing. And so the performance aspect is not really here. But I mean, obviously it, it goes, it keeps up with traffic and that sort of thing. It's just really slow. Interestingly, aside from the slowness, and the weight, which you feel when you're both accelerating and stopping. Aside from those two things, it actually feels a lot like the Ford truck. You're sitting here, I mean, I got a Ford truck steering wheel, you're sitting in, a, the vehicle's about the same size as a Ford truck, and you know, you got the Ford switch gear, and it, from a driving perspective, there's a lot of Ford in this car. It's everything else where it's been completely altered and changed and messed with. Everybody looks at you, it's kind of interesting. You know, I'm driving this car around in Orange County here, where Iluso is, and, Traditionally in Orange County, there's just an enormous amount of supercars and nobody really cares that much. But this is just on such an insane level that it still gets like, wow, like this turns heads here. If you want to turn heads in a, in a place that's saturated, this is the vehicle. I will say driving this around, you do get the feeling of safety and like comfort that the company wants you to have <laughs> in the sense that it's both luxurious and you're just sure that nothing is gonna screw with you. I mean, this thing is armored, this thing is bulletproof, you know, the, the windows don't go down, you are you're weigh a zillion pounds, you get steel everywhere, nothing is gonna screw with you when you're driving this vehicle. And there's something kind of, you know, it's kind of nice, like, oh, I'm, I'm just not even slightly worried about anything in this car. All right, here goes, I'm gonna really floor it now. Yeah, I mean, it's not that bad, but that's 30, 35. Like, it isn't fast by any stretch of the imagination. The steering is also, I mean, the steering is like you would expect from a Super Duty pickup truck, but again, you really feel the weight going around corners. You can feel, it doesn't body roll that much. It's pretty controlled with that, but you can feel, I mean, it's a heavy vehicle. You're not exactly gonna be throwing this thing around. The one advantage this doesn't have in terms of safety and personal security is maneuverability. If you're trying to like outmaneuver a foe, on the road. <laughs> this is not the vehicle for that. This is the one where if they're attacking you, you just kind of hunger down, but it's not gonna be able to outrun anything. And so that's the USSV Rhino GX. This is a ridiculous vehicle, but in some senses, it truly is the ultimate SUV. And if a Range Rover is too plebeian for you, and if a Bentley Bentayga isn't tough enough, there's always this. And now it's time to give the Rhino GX a Doug score. Starting with the weekend categories and styling, the Rhino's look is uh, an acquired taste, let's just say, and it gets a five out of 10. Acceleration is slow and it gets a one out of 10. Handling isn't much. It's not dangerously awful, but it's exceptionally slow and ponderous and heavy and huge, and it gets a two out of 10. Fun factor is decent. This isn't fast or fun to throw around corners, but there's definitely some joy in driving the largest, most ridiculous thing on the road, and it gets a six out of 10. Same deal with cool factor. In today's world of big SUVs being common, it's hard to wow anyone with a big SUV, but this is really the ultimate big SUV, and it gets a 7 out of 10 for a total weekend score of 21 out of 50. Next up are the daily categories and features. The Rhino has some novel safety and protection measures, but it lacks the latest in-car technology, and it gets a 6 out of 10. Comfort is fine, though it's not exceptionally nice or luxurious. That's not really the focus here, and it gets a 5 out of 10. Quality is good enough. The Ford diesel engine will go forever, though materials are only okay, not amazing, and it gets a 6 out of 10. Practicality is a mixed bag. It has a lot of seats and it can do a lot of stuff, but the Rhino also gets horrible gas mileage and it's too big to park it basically anywhere. It gets a seven out of 10. Finally, value, and these things are huge money, over 200 grand. People who seriously need the protection may feel differently, but for me, it earns a four out of 10 for a total daily score of 28 out of 50. Add it up and the Doug score is 49 out of 100, which places it here against other relevant massive vehicles. The closest real competitors to the Rhino are the Mercedes G-Wagon 4x4 squared and the G-Wagon 6x6, both of which are more appealing to me, but the Rhino takes protection to a totally different level, and it's a purpose-built vehicle for people who really need safety and security.